Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist. As you will soon see, this is a bit of a safety related video just to give people a bit of a heads up. We've talked about electrical systems in Japan on previous videos, talking about the circuit breakers and in the renovating the old Japanese farmhouse video, we showed you a few things related to electrical systems in Japan that we thought were sort of important to know about. This one's really important. Uh, as in most countries in Japan, we have adapters like this one, where we can plug this adapter into the electrical outlet on the wall to give us a few more sockets. So where you might have a single or a double outlet on the wall, of course you can plug this in and that will give you a few more sockets. This one has an extra three. So there's a few different designs, but that's a fairly standard one. So in most countries, if you have one of these and you plug it into an outlet on the wall, you can pretty well safely plug in anything at all into that, can't you? And usually the only thing that you have to watch is not to use a series of these, right? So usually if you plug this into the wall, usually it's dangerous to plug leads in and then another adapter and then plug leads in and another adapter and end up with six or seven things plugged into it. That's usually dangerous in most countries, isn't it? So of course we never do that. We only ever use one at a time because that's the best way to go for safety. However, <laughs> Recently, we were sleeping and there was a bit of a smell at, at the beginning of at, at earlier on in the night when we first went to bed, there was a bit of a smell and it was a bit of a, a bit of a disturbing smell. It was a sort of a plasticky smell. Didn't like it, didn't like it, but couldn't see, couldn't find any reason for it. So I sort of ignored it. And then later on in the night, it got stronger and just, it was one of those things where it was just annoying it's like no there's something wrong with this so we got up and turned on the lights and started going around and, and looking around to see where it might be coming from and we had a oil heater in the room and checked the oil heater didn't seem to be anything wrong with that and then checked in the other room another room had an air conditioner turned on didn't seem to be coming from that and eventually decided that to pull a, a cupboard back, there's a small cupboard against the wall, pull that away from the wall to get in to see where the lead from the oil heater went into the wall. And the lead from the oil heater actually went into another adapter, which was this one. And when we looked at it, there was smoke coming out of it. So as you can see, it was burning. It was burning, it was melting, and there was smoke coming out of it. So there's a pretty good chance that that could have actually gone to flame pretty soon, probably, judging by that. And it was actually behind a small dressing table, not a cupboard, it was a dressing table, and beside a window, and that window had a curtain. So there's a pretty good chance if this had started flaming, that it would have got to the curtain or the dressing table or both and that was the room we were sleeping in. So we only had this one adapter plugged into the wall and the one lead from the from the oil heater plugged into this and the only reason we did that was because it was behind a dressing table we didn't want the lead sticking in the wall because it would take up too much space behind the dressing table so we used this flat adapter against the wall and then put the lead into it so that it wouldn't be standing out from the wall so much and assuming that because it was only one it was only one appliance getting plugged into it that it wouldn't be a problem because in most countries these things these sort of adapters if you only use one device in there plug in one appliance in there you'll be safe you could plug in a heater or a refrigerator or anything if there's only one usually it's not possible because of the standards it's not possible to overload the the adapter however in Japan the standards are different and the adapters have different ratings there isn't one standard for all adapters there's the different adapters have different amperages amp maximum amperages on them so this one actually has this actually has 1500 watt rating, a 1500 watt rating, which 
when we bought it, we assumed that it was pretty well bulletproof because it had a 1500 watt rating, but it's only got a 15 amp rating. So that must have been the problem. However, we've seen this before with other things as well. We had another one where we used this short lead just to go between an appliance and the wall. And again, pretty heavy duty looking lead and we only had one appliance running off it and it started to melt. So where you can see here where the, where the, the two prongs actually went into the wall, it started to melt. So not as dramatically as this one, of course, but, but still it was the same thing. So the purpose of this video is to let you know in some countries, if you use one lead with one appliance or one adapter with one appliance, you, you, you can assume that it's safe. In Japan, that's not the case. So we would strongly advise, if you're going to be spending time in Japan and you're going to be plugging things into appliances, then particularly if you're going to be using adapters or extension leads, definitely check on it what the amperage and the wattage is and check on the appliance, what the amperage and the wattage is. Those of you who haven't seen it before, there's usually a little sticker or a little plaque or something on the appliance that says what the wattage and the amperage is. And you want it to be less than this, or you want this to be more. This has to be more than the appliance. Otherwise, that could be you. And unfortunately too, the system in Japan is not earthed usually. Sometimes for things like washing machines, they'll have an earth option. But for most, most, appliances and most outlets in, around the house, you won't have any earth, earth uh, connection. So this sort of thing obviously is more, more likely to happen. So it's, it's, it's definitely worth keeping in mind as you can see. There's, been, there's other things as well that we mentioned on previous videos. Circuit breakers here are usually lower than what they, than what they should be. So usually when you plug in your electric toaster and a few other things together, it'll blow your circuit breaker. Quite often that's the case, particularly places where you rent because you can't do anything about it. Uh, if you own a place in Japan, you can you can upgrade your, your power board and your circuit breakers so that you can you can load more stuff into it. But you just gotta be really, really aware of this because obviously that could bite you. You know, even if you're just renting in Japan and you've got a couple of things plugged in, you can end up with that happening to you. So the simplest thing, rather than have to, the, Obviously, if you're going to use one of these, check the amperage and the wattage. Probably another easier option is just to make sure that you only plug things into the, directly into the outlet. That's the safest thing. That's what we did with the, the, the oil heater after this. Just plug the oil heater straight into the wall outlet and there's nothing else plugged in. It's actually a double outlet. It's got two, two outlets, one, one under the other. And we've only just plugged the oil heater in there. We've plugged nothing else in there so it doesn't overload it. So, anyway, just a heads up, be careful. <laughs> More videos coming soon.